Hi, this is Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. So today it's going to be Carl Racine, the Attorney General of D.C., the fellow who's pushing the investigation into Trump on the D.C. front. Interesting guy. Here's some facts. Okay, so Carl Anthony Racine was born on December 14, 1962. He is a Haitian American lawyer slash politician. Now, in 1965 or 1966, his family fled to from Haiti, actually, they immigrated to Washington, D.C. He was about three years old at the time. He attended public schools and then attended the University of Pennsylvania. 1989, University of uh, Virginia Law School is where he uh, graduated from. He had worked at a, um, a pro bono clinic representing uh, migrant farm workers. When in, while in law school, also, he and his mother produced the first Haitian Creole slash English legal dictionary intended to aid Haitian uh, immigrants. And then in 1989, Racine joined the Venable uh, LLP law firm. In uh, 1982, he became a staff attorney at the Public Defender Service for the District of Columbia and then returned to private practice handling a large white collar and civil cases. Later, he served as an associate uh, White House counsel in the uh, Clinton administration. Now, in 2000, he returned to Venable Law Firm and served as a member of the D.C. Judicial Nomination Commission, which is a uh, selection panel for judges. Uh, in 2006, he was elected a managing partner and the first black managing partner of a top 100 uh, law firm. He led his team in a class action racial discrimination suit for over 2,500 African-American employees, one of the largest uh, suits uh, brought. Uh, 2011 to 2012, he represented DC council member. A, a, he represented a DC council member who pleaded guilty to paying for personal luxury items with $300,000. This is 2012 money earmarked for grants and for charity and for youth baseball groups. Now, during the sentencing, uh, Racine successfully argued that uh, the fellow deserved a lighter sentence because his guilty plea was an example of his commitment to teaching the district's youth how to take responsibility when you have done wrong. Okay, 2014, Racing led an inquest into a state-issued credit card spending uh, by members of the Board of Education in Montgomery County. So let me say that again. In 2014, Racing led an inquest into state-issued credit card spending okay, by members of the Board of Education in Montgomery County, Maryland, finding no evidence of intentional wrongdoing, but recommending that access to the cards be revoked. Yeah. Now, 2014, he announced his candidacy for D.C. Attorney General against a friend and a prominent white-collar attorney who actually dropped out of the race and endorsed Racine, saying he has all the qualifications. Racine became the first elected Attorney General for the District of Columbia, uh, beating out four uh, other challengers, as a matter of fact. And then as Attorney General, uh, he established four priorities for the D.C. office. Number one, data-driven juvenile justice reform. Number two, protecting consumers from abusive tactics by unscrupulous businesses. Number three, preserving affordable housing and protecting tenants. And then number four, uh, advancing democracy and safeguarding public integrity. That all sounds good. Uh, 2015, as Attorney General, he established a standalone Office of Consumer Protection focused on outreach, education, and legal actions to protect consumers. Uh, he has brought tens of millions of dollars to the district through settlements and judgments in, in cases against corporate uh, wrongdoers. Now, 2017, he announced a run for re-election and won with 93% of the vote. And then in 2021, following the storming of the U.S. Capitol, Racine urged Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment in order to remove President uh, You-Know-Who from office, declaring him disinterested in upholding the duties of his office. And then in 2022, he's been mentioned as a possible candidate for mayor. So that is this uh, high-powered guy, uh, Carl 
Racine. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, the D.C. Attorney General Racine, uh, back in January of 21, had uh, thought about um, Trump's uh, culpability and uh, D.C.'s uh, uh, ability of prosecuting him for what would have been a, would be a misdemeanor, unfortunately, under D.C. law for inciting the riot. And then the difficulty comes in extraditing Trump back to D.C. from anywhere else. And now, in particular, Mar-a-Lago, since uh, we've uh, discovered that perhaps uh, Florida is looking at some obscure um, uh, fact in their law, that means that they might be able to um, uh, challenge uh, an extradition request from an, another state. So. Uh, it's a long shot, it's, and, um, and it's not uh, at all clear. But I thought with the question of whether Trump can be extradited back to New York, uh, we could also look at D.C. And I wonder if the D.C. Um, um, uh, challenge to extradite Trump from uh, Florida to D.C. could be a test case uh, for uh, New York, see what goes wrong and what they could do better. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I'm just a guy at home, retired, reading tarot cards. So that's my credibility. However, this Crow Tarot uh, seemed like a really good deck for this question that I have. So let's pull this uh, deck out, go over it quickly, and I'll show you what I know. The Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan, and I understand that Cullinan is a, 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 a pen name, a nom de plume, that uh, this person, M.J., which is part of her actual name, uh, has chosen to use uh, for her publication. Uh, I don't know if it's just this uh Endeavor, maybe others. It's a good uh, instruction book. It gives you some, some clear um, direction as to how you might interpret the cards. And of course, but interpretation of tarot cards is a very personal thing, I believe. Uh, but the book is readable and the box is sturdy. So that's something. The cards, on the other hand, are very interesting. I love these cards. They look kind of antique in the, the patina of the finish, or the fake patina of the finish around the edges of the cards. And then the cards themselves are very um, crow-like in their uh, interpretations, which I kind of like. I mean, I admire crows, and I detest crows at the same time. They're smart. They get things done. They kind of rule over their little part of the uh, uh, aeronomic d dominion. And, uh, but at the same time, they're ruthless. I mean, once they set their sights on something, it takes a little bit before they stop. Uh, in other words, if they're trying to steal some food, steal some baby chicks to eat, or kill another bird, obviously for food, that's what birds do. They eat each other, sadly, if they're um, prey birds. So um, we'll see what these cards come up for regarding this um, kind of strange issue. It's off, it's, you know, it's not something that's likely to happen, but I thought, let's read on this, and then maybe it'll warm us up for a read on the New York uh, uh, Attorney General's, uh, perhaps, uh, challenge with Florida to get uh, 45 back uh, for uh, his crimes. Yes, his crimes. So we're going to take six cards right off the top, just to get this going. One, two, three, four five, six. And I'll tell you what happened is actually I had intended to do a reading uh, on the uh, New York uh, district attorney and somehow I got sidetracked into DC and did uh, a little digging around to see what uh, this DC uh, district uh, attorney general was like. And, uh, and then that took me off in this other path. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't be looking here. I should be looking at New York. But I, since I did the work and I did the uh, uh, digging, I thought, and then in the end, I felt a little disappointed that, oh my gosh, I've been on the wrong track. But thinking, huh, I wonder if this actually is something I should look at. It doesn't hurt to make a video out of it. And here we are. So the signifier for this card for Carl Racine, Attorney General of DC, and on whether um, he might uh, press uh, charges uh, against Trump for the insurrection. The signifier of this reading is the Six of Cups. Well, this is interesting. You know, the Six of Cups harkens back to a better time. It kind of makes us think about when things were the way we wanted them to be. And um, so we'll just leave it at that. It's a very uh, vague kind of a signifier in my mind, but that's the signifier we have, the Six of Cups, uh, remembering when things were uh, better, easier, the way we liked them. Challenge to that then is the Five of Cups, and the Five of Cups is disappointment. It's um, abuse of power, as a matter of fact. And so the challenge to 
having things the way they were is in fact this abuse of power, uh, in my opinion, performed by the former uh, guy. Number 45. Um, the basis of this reading then is going to be, ah, okay, that's interesting, the Two of Pentacles. And uh, this crow is really, look, he's struggling to keep these Two Pentacles up in the air. And uh, so that's the basis of this reading, is that it's an uphill battle for DC to, um, to press these charges. You know, oftentimes, uh, you know, it's just like with someone in your life, maybe your kids or a friend or a work uh, associate that you know, you know they're doing something wrong, but proving it is a whole other, is a whole other story. And sometimes you just feel like, let me just let this lie, and then something else may come along later uh, that uh, helps uh, boost my uh, belief. So that's uh, keeping things up in the air is the basis. The uh, recent past of this reading is the Ace of Wands. You know, and the Ace of Wands is a great big offer of a movement of uh, a plan in a particular direction. And it seems to me in this scenario, although it's not perfectly clear, uh, there's some turbulence on this side of this of this card, and there's some results on this side of these feathers uh, kind of uh, floating around. And so this big uh, push of a plan, of an action, of, 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 of getting something done, seems to be loosely held uh, by this crow. He could drop this at any time. It's not for sure that he's going to be able to carry this on where he needs to go, unless he gets a better grip. So that's the past. In the sky for this reading is um, the Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles, honing your craft, getting things just perfect, studying the situation. You keep repeating it over and over and looking to see uh, what you can do to make this the perfect uh, outcome. So that seems pretty appropriate to me. Um, I want to get this guy over here because he's significant. He's the loss that we're talking about. Now, the... Um, Likely outcome of this part of the Celtic cross, then, ah, making a choice. Are we going to do it or are we not? We have truth. We have justice. Justice is also rules because to get to justice, you have to follow the rules of law. And if the rules of law don't indicate that you're going to get to a, uh, a, a win, uh, to a completion, then even though something is, uh, is uh, against uh, truth, uh, you may not choose uh, to go there um, just because in the end it would be, be perceived as a loss and uh, you lose the validity of the whole issue, whereas uh, the issue always had validity. You just can't, don't have the uh, wherewithal to make it come to. Now, the self, the self of Carl Racine, this very interesting um, attorney general of D.C., the self is going to be partnership. It's the lovers. The lovers has to do with um, just that, uh, making a partnership with a strong partnership, a committed partnership with someone to getting this thing done. So how strong are the partnerships that the D.C. Attorney General's Office can, uh, can, can make uh, towards their goal? That's the question, I think. So the environment that that's in then, ha, huh, is uh, the Three of Swords. And the Three of Swords is, is disappointment, broken heart, can't be done. We have to learn how to let it go. Let, let the issue pass. So that's the environment that they're in, is that it seems like this is something that can't be done. Um, in the uh, hopes and fears for this, ah, okay, this is interesting. This is the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is, involves, listen, all these choices that this crow has to choose from to try to get this done. And he's looking towards victory. Here's the laurel reef. Uh, it's just underneath that is a heartbreak that we just talked about. And so he's turned his back on the serpent which is anything uh, tricky, I would guess. And he's looking toward, towards victory. How can I make this become a victory? The likely outcome of all of this, and remember, the question is, will the D.C. Attorney General uh, bring a case against Trump? Well, this is the chariot. This is things moving fast. And uh, so this is things moving forward in, uh, in, in, a, in a, look, here's the laurel wreath again, moving forward in a, in the direction of your goal. Hmm. It's interesting. So for me, this tells me that there, he's moving forward in trying to make this determination as to whether he will have a successful, uh, bid, uh, in this uh, instance of the insurrection and 45's involvement in it. That's where I'll leave this one. So that was a pretty interesting read. 
Uh, like I said, it all started from a misunderstanding in my brain as to uh, who I was investigating, who I was digging up their past to, as far as Carl Racine. I should have been looking into the New York, uh, uh, the, 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 district, uh, the Attorney General in New York, I suppose. Uh, but I got off on a tangent, got all involved in it, and uh, it's, it gave us an interesting reading, I guess. Um, in, any, in any event, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little leg of the trip. And uh, if you want, come back tomorrow. I'll be here, and I think it's going to be about that other attorney general uh, who's going to have the fight uh, uh, with uh, Florida. Anyway, come on back, and we'll check it out. Ciao for now.